ये हाय गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन सो शेल वी बिगिन द सेशन टुडेस टॉपिक इज चैप्टर नंबर सेवन डिटेल्स डिजाइन या दिस इज अ न्यू चैप्टर ऑल राइट सो द फर्स्ट पार्ट ओवर हेयर इज फॉर द डिटेल डिजाइन इज ऑब्जेक्टिव्स then after the objective there is a introduction of the introduction of the detailed design then modularization that is how to how to create the how to divide the different a uh, program into different modules then there is a file design within the file design there are multiple fi file design method that is sequential organization then there is a index sequential organization then inverted list organization then direct access organization so these are the various designs uh, that are known as a file design method that is used in the uh, sequential that is used in the detailed design and after this there is a database design how to how to make the design of the database <coughs> The next one is the objectives of the database. That means, what is the main objective of the database? What is the difference between the logical and the physical view of the data? Then the schema and the subschema. That means, what is the difference between the schema and the subschema? Then data structure. That means, how we can make the data structure of the relationship, data structure of the organizations. Then the types of data structure that include the hierarchical structuring, network structuring, relational. Then normalization. That is, what is the normalization? How we are following the normalization? Then summary and questions. So let's move to the objective. What is the main objective of the detailed design? So what is the process of the system design? That is objective. What are the alternative methods of the file organization? That means, what are the various methods by which we can make the alternative methods of the file organization? So first is, what is the process of the system design? Then what are the various alternatives that is used for the file organization? Then objectives of the database. the types of the data structure objective of the database means what are the various objective of the database why we are using the uh, database then uh, types of the data structure then difference between the schema and the sub schema then how to normalize the files how to normalize the files means uh, how to gather the requirements and how to uh, reduce the redundancy among the table that is known as how to normalize the files so let's move to the introduction part of this one the first is the introduction that is a detailed design introduction so whenever we are talking about the detailed design that translates the system requirement into the ways of optimizing them that means how we can operate how we can optimize the requirements of the system or system requirement and the design is a solution that is how to approach compared to the analysis as a or what is requirement or what is orientation that means what is required what is uh, what is to be followed up that is how to approach that is compared to the analysis part and the design phase focus on the detailed implementation of the system recommendation in the feasibility study that means how we can focus on the detailed design what are the various possibility or possible outcome that is required for the detailed design in the feasibility study and the emphasis is in, on translating performance specification into design specification that means how to translate the performance specification into the design specification and, and the design phase is the transition from a user oriented document to the program oriented document so design phase is moving from the logical to the physical that means from the user oriented design or document to the program oriented document so so that means we are focusing on the detailed design that is how to how to create the system with a proper designing proper documentation proper efforts and uh, with the minimum efforts and the minimum time the next is a modularization so one way to plan a new system is to focus on each functional sub system as a separate entity or the application area so this is a one way of plan out a new system that is how to plan out a new system for so making a sub system as a separate entity or the application area sub system means dividing the main system into the multiple part that is that are known as a sub systems and using such an approach each application area is treated as it were totally in, uh, independent that means each and every module is independent of each other that one module does not depend on the other module and there is a minimal sharing of the information and the system processes between the areas that means every module is taken out as an individual component they work 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 hard for their component for example if two major system efforts were being simultaneously undertaken one in the order document department another is the accounts section for example the order if affects the amount of receivables amount of receivable effect customer credit vary rate the order and much more and from an application point of view the order processing sub system should be designed to meet the account receivable that is how how to or design or how to meet the design achievable that is designed as per the requirement of the user 
that is uh, that is used for the functional requirement and the vice versa and there will be no need to review what application or each application area for common internal process and modular system approach divides the each application into the smallest unit known as a module so uh, as the name advice modularization that means dividing the same or dividing the main application dividing the main program into the number of the smaller units that is known as the modules and these modules may apply to a particular application or they may be common to one or more application areas and modules may be used only once or they can be used or they may be used several times during the processing of an application so whenever we develop any application that application should be developed for making the designing for for make the module very very effective during the processing of an application and breaking up of a problem into the smaller manageable parts is very beneficial for making the modularization now what are the various advantages of using the module or what are the various advantages of dividing the main program into various module first one is it can speed up the system process in general and the computer programming function in particular so whatever the system whatever the detail that we are finding out so what are the various systems that is used in general and the computer programming function in particular then it eliminates unnecessary duplication so what are the various duplication that is required for the unnecessary what are the various application or that that eliminates unnecessary duplication that means whenever we are dividing or whenever the main application is divided into smaller modules that also eliminates the unnecessary duplication unnecessary redundant data and it can result in higher quality uh, because of the centralized or because of the concentrated effort that is devoted to the development of the common module then it also provides the better control over the total project system over the total system project and it uh, more efficiently maintain the system as a correction at one place that rectifies another system also now it also provides a flexibility as an additional feature maybe that may be added later on and smaller parts of the system can be tested separately so so any, any any part of the system can be separately tested and that can be checked out whether it is used correctly or not and certainly these factors present in a, or as a strong argument in favor of the modularization and there are limitations also that is used for the uh, modularization now what are the various limitations first one is numerous unique application requirement which must be incorporated in the common module that will be used as a common module that is a numerous applications and if the single module is accommodate all the situations all the conditions it will become very large and complex so if there is a single module that is that is that is used to accommodate each and every condition each and every situation so it will become very large and complex data and many systems that changes for a particular application area many times a high rate of change that means a high rate of potential error now uh, what are the files so whatever the data that is stored in the in the main module that are stored in a file according to the user's requirement and some records are processed on a daily basis and some are updated at a random and depending upon the way how the data will be used the file is organized so it depends on the way how the data will be organized the file is used on the basis of the requirement or the basis of the gathering on the basis of the updations now what are the various keyword that is used with the file ba or basic file re records one is a byte it is the smallest addressable unit in a system and it consists of the eight bits and represents a character so when whenever we represent the eight bits that means a character that is a combination of the eight bits that is a byte the element and it is a combination of one or more byte or one or more bytes and is it is referred to as a field a field is actually a physical space on the tape or disk so what is the field that is a physical space on a tape or a disk and the roll number age name of the employee etc are examples of the are example of the fields that means what are the various column that is used in a table the next one is a record that means a particular record about the employee that is name age roll number a proper each and every field will be filled out that is known as a record the elements related to are combined into a record an employee has a record with its name his name designation basic pay allowances deductions etc as its fields 
and record may have a unique key to identify a record example a employee number so this employee number that is used as a primary key that is used as a unique key to identify a record and records are represented as a logical and the physical records and logical records maintained a, or maintains a logical relationship among all the data items in the record and it is a way when a program or the user sees the data and in contrast a physical record is the way data are recorded on a stored storage medium so how the data will be stored on a storage medium that is also record so we have done with the byte we have done with the element we have done with the record next one is a file that is a collection of the various records so when we collect the multiple records for example there are five employees we have collected the records we have collected the records of all these five employees that that becomes a file so records have a same fields but different value in each record the size of the file is limited by the size of the memory available so if there is a five byte memory available so the record will also be a five byte then database it is a set of the interrelated files interrelated files means whenever we combine the multiple files that is known as a database so first one is byte then element then record then file then database so it is a set of the interrelated files the files in combination tend to link to a common solution for example Uh, for example, a student attendance file, student result file, admission file, etc. are the examples of the academic software pertaining to the student. That means what are the various academic software part that is used with the, or that is that is, that is related to the students. So next one is a file design. Next part is file design. So next one is a file design so whenever we are using some file that is organized or this is organized to ensure that uh, records are available for the processing that means whenever the records are organized in a perfect manner so that if there is any or uh, if there is anything that is used for the processing that the processing will be done on the record that is file and it should be designed in the line with the activity and the volatile of the information and the nature of the strong or the storage media in the devices it should be designed in the line with the activity so whenever it, it it should be designed that is designed with the activity and the volatile of the information and the nature of the storage media and devices other considerations that are used with the file design are cost of the my file media that is highest for disk and the lowest for tape then inquiry requirement that is the real time versus the batch processing and the file privacy integrity security and the confidentiality so these are the various considerations that is used so one is the cost of the file media that is used then the inquiry requirement then file privacy integrity security and the confidentiality and there are four methods for organizing the file one is sequential then index sequential inverted list and the direct access so these are the four methods of organizing the files one is the sequential access then index methods then sequential then inverted list and the direct access so these are the four methods of organizing the files and each method is explained over here so first one is a sequential that means uh, storing and retrieving the data in a sequence that is known as a sequential that means storing and sorting in a physical contiguous blocks within a file on tape or disk and records are also in sequence within each block so whenever we are taking out the record that is available in a sequence within each and every block and to access a record previous records within the blocks are scanned so when, whenever we are accessing the record whenever we access any record so whatever the previous record that is used within the blocks are scanned and there was a sequential record design is best suited for the get next activities trading one record after another within a search delay that means sequential means one record after the another that means everything in a sequence like in a flop it like in a disk right and in a, in a sequential organization records can be added only at the end of the file and it is not possible to insert a record in the middle of the file without rewriting it that means whenever there is a sequence so we cannot we are not able to insert the data in the middle of the file no only the sequence either at the starting point either at the middle end so if i want to insert the data in the middle of the file so we have to rewrite the file again for inserting the data into the middle in a, in a database system however a record may be inserted anywhere in the file which automatically requests or resequence the records that is following the inserted data 
uh, in a sequential file update. So if there is any updation in the sequential file, transaction records are in the same sequence as the master file. The records from both the files are matched one record at a time resulting in an updated master. So whenever there is a record from the both the files one record at a time that results in an updated master file. For example, when the system changes the customer city of a residence as specified in the transaction file and correct it in the master file A. This is one of the examples. So uh, C is uh, replaced by A and that adds and deletes the content. And in a personal computer with the two hard disks, the master file is also located on the diskette. Next one is the index sequential organization. So likewise, the sequential organization, there is a key sequential organization that also stores our data in a physical contiguous box. And the difference is uh, in the use of the indexes to the locate the record. So whatever the location in the records, whatever the uh, data that is available over here, so that is used for the that is used for indexes to locate the record. And to understand this method, we need to differentiate among three areas in disk drive. There are three areas in the disk drive by which we can help the, or by which we can get the methods. One is a prime area, one is the overflow area, and one is the index area. So these are the three areas, or differentiated areas by which we can use, or by which we can understand the method to locate the files with the help of the sequence. Uh, one is a prime area, then overflow area, and the index area. What is the use of the prime area? How it is different from the overflow area? So file, or the prime area contains the file record stored by a key and the ID number. And each and every records are initially stored in the prime key. And the overflow area contains records added to the file that cannot be placed in a logical sequence in the prime area. And the index area is much like a data dictionary. We store the file in a data dictionary with the help of the prime area with the help of the index area. It contains keys of records and their locations on the disk. A pointer associated with each key is an address that tells the system where to find a record. That means where to find the records in the system. And in an airline reservation file, the index area might contain pointers to the Chicago and the daily flight, for example. And this, this flight points to the Chicago flight information stored in the prime area. And whenever we are talking about the index sequential organization that reduces the magnitude of the sequential and provides a quick access for the sequential and direct processing. That means there is no delay in the processing. Everything is available online. So that is very much advantageous. But the drawback is that extra space or extra storage space is required for the index. So whenever we, we are using the index sequence file, so there is an extra space that is required for the for the index. And it also takes a longer to search the index for data access or retrieval. So more and more time is taken for the storage. Sorry, more and more space is used for storage. And also takes the more and the more time to search the index for the data access or the retrieval. We have done with the uh, sequential and we have done with the index sequential organization. Now next part is the chaining. So that means how to relate with one file with another file by the use of the index by use of the sequence. So there is a file organization that also requires that a relationship be established among the data items and it also shows how the characters from the fields, field from files and files relate to another file. So how the fields are related with the files and the, how the files are related to one another. And establishing the relationship is done through chaining or the use of the pointers. The example on airline reservation file shows how the pointers link one record to another and the part number also retrieves a record. And there is a better way to chain the record by linking a pointer to each of the files and this pointer gives the address of the next part type of the simple or the same class and there is a search method that also applies similarly to the other parts in the file. So whenever we are approaching for the another file that also used for the chaining in other, another file. Next one is inverted list organizations. So we have done with the sequential chaining so index sequential. Now next is the index sequential storage method that is the inverted list organization maintains an index. And the two methods differ, however, in the index level and the record storage. And the index sequential method has a multiple index for a given A. 
key, whereas the inverted list method has a single index for the each key type. That means whatever the key type that is used, that is used for the inverted type, that is used for the key one type. And in an inverted uh, list, the records are not necessarily stored in the particular sequence. They are placed in the data storage area, but indexes are updated for the record keys and the location. And data for our flight reservation system has a separate index area and then a data location area. And these are the all are defined as keys and a separate index is maintained for each. And in the data location area, flight information is, is in no particular sequence. And assume that a passenger needs information about daily flight and the agent requests the records with the flight description that is a daily flight and as the DVMS then reads the data sequentially until it finds a key value for the daily flight and there's a DVMS that essentially tells the agent for departing the time value of the flight and it can be seen that inverted lists are best for applications that require specific data on our multiple keys and they are ideal for static files because additions and deletions cause expensive pointer updating next one is a direct access organizations that means organization of the direct access means directly access the fields whatever the field that is available they directly capture the fields with the help of the uh, with the help of the files with the help of the data that will be captured automatically in the records automatically in the files so in the direct access uh, file organizations records are placed randomly throughout the file randomly means in every anywhere there is no sequence there is no index nothing and they can be fetched randomly throughout the files and records not be in the sequence but they are updated directly and rewritten back in the same location. Now new records are added at the end of the file or inserted in the specified location or specific locations based on the software commands. And the records are accessed by addresses that, that specify their disk locations and whenever we are using the address that is required for the location and record for linking records for establishing the relationship and address are of two types one is absolute one is a relative absolute means a physical location of the records and that is usually uh, used in the format of the sector track record number for example when we're talking about the 3 14 16 that means go to the sector 3 track number 14 and the sixth record of the track and one problem that is used with the absolute address is that they become invalid when the file that contains the record is relocated in the disk. And one way around this is to use the pointer for the updated records. And whenever we are talking about the relative address that gives the record location relative to the beginning of the file. And there must be a fixed length record for the reference. And another way of locating the record is to num uh, differentiate, is to find out the number of the byte that is required from the beginning of the file. This is one of the example of the absolute address and the relative address. This is my address is 38 and sector 2. My relative address is 4th house on the left from community center. That means direct address, absolute. Relative means uh, indirect, going from here to there and so on. 